create this cool little neon sign effect. And you're going to see I have this finished version here. It breaks down for you all the different effects we can use. But you're going to see that it's relatively easy on certain parts, but then also understanding that we are going to have some kind of extra nuance to allow us to get this kind of multi-textured look that's not just on the outside, but somehow like on the inside kind of curving all throughout in the individual letters. So let's go ahead and just start off with a new blank document. I'm going to go over here to new. And then very simply, I'm going to make a pretty large canvas, 4,000 pixels by 3,000. And of course, I'm going to go landscape. And then very simply, click create. And then from here, I want to make sure that I have a black background. If yours is not in a black background, you can always change that from properties and then make your background go over to here to black. And that's going to be nice and simple. But of course, you can choose a completely different background if you like. But for this purposes, to make it a little bit more visible, I like to have my background black. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just simply just put our text in. So, and I chose a nice font for that. And that is going to be this something called Neon Noir, Neo Noir. <laughs> okay. And then very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and just click and drag that out. And now I'm just going to type out Marvelous. All right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click on that little check sign. And now when I have this all selected here, all right, I'm going to make sure that my layer is selected. I'm just going to use my control T or transform option to be able to make that nice and big. All right, so let's go ahead and just make it so our bounding box is taking up everything that needs to be nothing too much more. Now I'm going to go ahead and resize this because it's not the size I want, but I'm going to show you a nice way to do this very cleanly and easily. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole canvas, but I'm going to use the transform tool to be able to do that. So I'm just going to go over to make sure that my layer is selected, do command or control T, all right, and then just give myself enough room to kind of grow. And I'm going to make this grow out concentrically by using my shift and my alt key. And of course, it's going to be the option key if you're on the Mac. And just let that grow, 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 let go. And then you're going to see that's going to grow out concentrically from the center, maybe a little bit more. Sometimes it can fly off hand if you go too far off the visible screen. Okay, good enough for now. Now, what you may want to do before you even start tinkering with any of this stuff is get your whole uh, letting and your kerning and everything all in place. Because notice how these guys do come in together really nicely. But if you wanted to, you could go so far as to saying, hey, you know what? I want this to be a little bit closer together, right? So you can see, okay, that kind of works. Okay, great. Maybe that's all right, right? But notice how like the little kind of cables, if you will, if you are going to be doing a neon effect, may sort of go too far. Right, as you can see, you can do something like that, and that's not going to work. So just really kind of get it set up in terms of the way that you want it to be. All right, so I'll just go ahead and make mine 10. I know the exact number I want. That's beautiful. And now let's go ahead and zoom in, and let's make sure our layers panel is now activated. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new layer. All right, and this is going to be a blank layer. This is probably the most tricky part of the whole exercise, and we're going to get it over with very quickly. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this Neon. All right, now here's the fun part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select what's on the Marvelous layer, right? But I'm going to only select it just to get the bounding box and all the selection options within there. But guess what? I'm going to still have the Neon layer chosen. So watch what I'm going to do now. I'm going to hold down the Control or the Command key on the Mac. You can see as I move my mouse over it, I get this little guy right here. Neon layer is still chosen, but watch what happens when I click on it. Again, holding down the controller command key, you're going to see I get these little marching ants inside there. Now what that's going to do, it's going to give me kind of a little extra stroke eventually inside of that space. So I'm kind of creating this to be its own sort of entity uh, by selecting it there, right? So it's kind of an interesting thing because it's kind of invisible, feeling a little disjointed, but it is going to do the trick for you. All right, let me go ahead and just zoom in on that so we can see exactly what we're doing. Now, let's go ahead and modify this selection because we want it to be sort of like in the middle of the letters. So I'm going to go over here to select, and I'm going to say modify and then contract. Now this is going to be kind of a spice to taste. These numbers are really up to you depending on, you know, the thickness of your font, uh, what you decide to work with and really even like your aesthetic. So I'll just go ahead and do maybe like 4. And it's going to it's going to basically contract it so it's going to go a little bit inside of there. 
again, creating kind of like the wires and the bulbs inside there. So I click OK, and it kind of moved inside there, really nice. But I also want to smoothen it. So let's go ahead and go over here to Select, Modify, and then I'm going to say Smooth, right? And then that's fine. Choose. Two pixels is pretty good, right? Just keeping that at a nice smooth level there. And now, nothing's really happened, okay? But understand again what's going on here is that I have something inside here that's inside of the neon layer, but it's invisible until I do what? Until I add a stroke to the neon layer. And you do this in a really kind of unusual way. You go over here to edit and you say stroke, okay? Not in the way that you might think with the effects panel. I choose that. It's going to be a spice to taste type of thing, but I'm going to keep mine at two, but maybe you want to experiment, you know, see maybe three might work, maybe one might work. It's really up to you, but I'm going to keep mine at white. I want it to be in the center, and I'm not choosing anything in terms of the blend mode, anything like that. But again, experiment with all these depending on the look and feel that you want. So now I click OK, and ostensibly nothing really happens. But when I make my Marvelous go disappeared, you can see there's actually something still there. You see that? And this is essentially where we're going to put our effects on this little stroke that we just created in the middle of that little selection that we had that we just applied a stroke to. Right? So this is really not going to even be affected by it because essentially we're creating kind of the light bulbs that are going to be living inside of this, but we're creating it on top of it. So then we're going to have our effect that's going to be glowing and shadowing on top of it. All right, so very good. Now let's go ahead and start creating our neon effect. So with the neon layer still chosen, I'm gonna go over here to effects, and I'm gonna go over here to stroke now. Where's stroke, there you go. And you're gonna see right away, I start to have my effect here. Okay, so okay, cool, it's going, it's going, it's going. Great, and you can choose the size of the stroke you want, right? Notice how it's coming in just like that. Maybe it's too big, maybe it's too small. Just play around with it until you get what you want. Very good. And then again, notice here, I have my stroke to be on the outside, but you can experiment with it. Let's just try center. Is that gonna change anything? Let's try inside. Okay, that's maybe a little bit, not the direction I want. I ultimately wanna have mine on the outside. I see that that actually has a nice effect to it. All right, and then from here, we can play around with the different levels of things from here. Okay, so if you wanted to, you can play around with the opacity. See how that comes in for you, right? Making that a little bit darker, right? But it's really, really, again, to be a spice to taste thing. Certainly, you can change the color if you want to. It's up to you, just what kind of effect you're looking for. I'm going to keep mine as this, and now I'm good to go. But I'm now going to add on a little glow. So I do that, and you can see, bam, right away, you see a huge difference. So we're adding on the glow to that original stroke that I created. Think about the stroke as the actual object itself. And we added on a stroke to the stroke, and now we added on an outer glow. And then right away, it's like, oh wow, that's amazing. Maybe you're done. But taking a look at the blend mode that I have here, I have this linear dodge that's making it do that. You'll want to experiment with these, right? Because if I go to normal, not so much, but the linear dodge, that actually does give me that effect. All right, so, so far, so good, doing pretty good. Now, if we take a look at the options I've chosen here for it, you might wanna have different variations of the original color that you have here, right? Because I have like this um, kind of magenta color, but you might wanna have like a slightly kind of different variation on it, so it doesn't look so uniform, it gives it some texture to it. That's fine, click on that. And then your spread and your size. So let's just take a look at what we do when we see our spread. Again, we don't want it to be too much because it's gonna look almost exaggerated. You really are creating the illusion of the light. And then the size, again, maybe that's what you wanna do. Maybe you're creating like a GIF and you want it to kind of, kind of like, you know, flash for you. It's really a spice to taste, but I kind of found this is a nice little sweet spot here. All right, and now let's go ahead and do one more. And believe it or not, we're gonna do a drop shadow, which is gonna create maybe even a little bit more of a kind of glow for us. And the trick here, you're gonna notice again, I have a blend mode of linear dodge, and then you're gonna see that I have my distance is at zero. Because if you have a distance that's gonna kind of go maybe a little bit far in a different direction, you may not want that, right? So it's, it's gonna look like it's a little bit sort of like not coming directly from the letters itself. 
And again, you might want to experiment with the color because what kind of shadow is it creating? And you may not want to have the exact same color, but it should be in the same kind of color family. So my glow is really coming in with this little sort of magenta color, a little bit darker. And because I'm working with this blend mode, it's blending in with the background really, really nicely. All right, so you can see before and after, and that really does make a difference. But let's go ahead and see some other things you might want to do. Let's kind of bring down the spread, bring up the spread. Size, I've got it up pretty, pretty high, but maybe you want to bring that down, but I'm going to bring that all the way up there because it really does create that nice glow. All right. Now, in terms of the angle, let's just go ahead and just bring this up like that and you can just see it's not really making a huge difference for me right now in this case but I think this is probably a good place to go one more time let's go in and turn that off turn it back on and that's looking pretty cool all right now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and I'm gonna marvel at my marvelous let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and that's looking pretty cool I'm pretty happy with that so the trickiest bit really is that stroke part where we're actually making an object out of our letters to be able to create something that we can apply a stroke to from the edit menu and then we're putting effects on that stroke the stroke is an actual object I want you to think about that as opposed to an effect okay and that's what gives us the ability to play around with all these right see that's my original and then BAM I just do that okay so you will want to play around with this again making sure that you have an understanding of what font you want to use, looking at your tracking, all that good stuff if you need to, especially if this needs to be connected to each other. But really awesome, really fun, and hopefully pretty easy at this point. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.